right, she's back to normal. Back to normal. She's at uh, 32 injuries and uh, 125s mains. So she pulls incredibly good. Incredibly good. Let's go for a pull. Oh yeah, oh my God. Yep. See, it got to the rib limiter really quick. It never does that with the uh, 36s Venturis. And just like that, we're back in the garage with my other two IDFs. Now that I know that these things are, these were popping every now and then. So now I know that these floats, if I set them the way, the Weber way, they're gonna pop through the throttle. You know, which is kind of annoying and embarrassing, especially when the engine is cold. Once they warm up, generally that popping stops. So I guess, I guess you have to run them a hair rich, maybe, uh, whatever. Anyway, so I just want to check if our bowls are actually what I think they are. Since you know how the other one was kind of low and the other one was high. One was running rich and the other one was running lean. Okay, these I do not know. I already went ahead and removed the screws. And let's find out together. I don't know if they're running rich. No idea. Or lean. No clue. Okay, that, that kind of looks kind of high. That looks really, really high. And this is probably why this one was popping. See, this one was calibrated the Weber way. 14 millimeters between the paper and the bottom of this area right there. And it be barely touching the ball. Which would be about there, right there. That would be your 14 millimeters. And I can already tell this one's too high. This is why this thing was popping on this one. Let's see that one. I will confirm the, the sizes with the with that meter thingy, digital caliper. There we go. Let's see this one. <gasps> this one's all the way down. Look at that. So this one was identical to our passenger side. This probably looks like it's around three, three millimeters. And it was calibrated the same way, you know, 14 mils, that thing barely touching the little ball on the valve, fuel valve. I did not know that. I, uh, this is, this is, I mean, you're, uh, this is real time. I did not know this one was going to be really low. And this one really really high like super duper high so it's leading me to believe that it, it's not the these it's not the floats it's the actual valve there's too much uh variance in the uh and the way that valve is made i bet you anything that that bearing or the little ball that sinks into the valve actually sinks more on this other one it sinks probably more into the valve itself before it actually compresses on the uh, the valve itself. I bet you that's what it is. It's actually the valve. It's not these things. Eh, whatever. Who cares? Uh, you know, normally if I was like a hard ass and everything, I would reorder everything and get, you know, like Weber original stuff. But because I'm not like that, I don't give a rat's ass. Um, I kind of just want my measurements to be the same. I mean, look at these. Look. Wow. That is a huge, huge difference. Hmm. Okay. So, we just figured that one out. I'm gonna go ahead and calibrate them real quick. Let's, let's actually measure it. This ought to be interesting. This one's at 6.6. .6. You know what? It's actually the ballast that's messing me up. 
let's just call it 6.60 millimeter because that what it was it just changed to 659 that's that one let's try the other one right there it's 364 okay so this side is uh, 3.64 millimeter. Okay, so these carburetors were never going to work right. Ever! If I did it, if I calibrate them the Weber way. Chinese clones do not calibrate them the Weber way. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Listen to me. Never, ever do that. Do it the old school way. Let the weight come down completely on that bearing, or ball, ball bearing, whatever the hell that is. Uh, I call it a posta. That's, that'd, be, that'd be Spanish. Anyways, let it come down and adjust this thing to the height with the gravity on there to 4. 425, actually. Let me turn the camera. Here's our old reading that we're running on the, on the car, remember? 485. It ended up being too lean because it was the, the carburetor started popping. So we went to four. And four at least kind of on the rich side. Kind of richy. So we went for 425. 425. You know, you could probably go 450. But I already know that 425 runs really good. And it actually, it felt like it just made more power. The, the IDS just made more fire, more, more, uh, Power with the 2.0 liter 44 IDF 32 millimeter Venturis with uh, 125 main jets. It just felt like it made even more power, like the maximum power it has ever, ever, ever made running this fuel bowl at this level or this setting. Okay, let's uh, turn the camera Oop, right back to where we were. Okay, so I'm going to recalibrate those real quick. So I think I've got this one. Like right there, 425. We got it at 425. So this one's done. I'm gonna do the other one, the exact same thing to it. Okay, and I think I've got this one too. I didn't show you how I bent that one because it already did it in, a, in a different video. But there you go, 425. So now these two are identical. So this would be a running set. They're exactly the same. See, so don't run your carburetor straight out of the box. They're not going to work right. As a matter of fact, they're going to be so dirty on the inside that you're going to have metal shavings going into your ports in here and getting sucked up by your thingies or in actually getting sucked up by your, your, your idols, these two idols. Um, so when you get them from, you know, they're brand new, you take them out, check these see if they're the same size sometimes they're not they're mixed this could be a 60 and this could be a 55 or even a 50 and a 60 so at least drill it out to 60 so that you have a matching uh, pump jet make sure these things are not upside down make sure these are tight if not just fix <sighs> fix this spring fix this spring so that it it is nice and you know pre pressed onto this side okay um, okay so we'll flip it over things that you want to do when you get it out of the box from these Chinese clones IDFs um, doesn't matter what brand 40s 44s 48s you want to retract this guy all the way out so that it doesn't touch the handle okay nothing touching that way you can close them when you loosen this, these things will actually move. They will literally move and allow you to close this even further. Okay. And you can, you could probably see the difference. Like this one has been calibrated. Okay. So before it was like right there, like that far away. Once I recalibrated them, I got about that much more uh, closing. Okay. Which gave me perfect vacuums at idle. When I hook up my vacuum hose to to this guy right here. No, I'm sorry, to this guy. 
and that guy. I was uh, getting exactly the same vacuums on my other carburetors. And actually I've run all these, so basically, yeah, they, they all have the same vacuum numbers because I did this. And then just tighten up these things back up while you still have some pressure on this, closing pressure. And that should calibrate that. Now, if you have like really sloppy throttles, like up and down, it you can just go like thunk 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 You go, uh oh, that's not good. Okay. I have, I bought these off uh, Amazon. Bought these off of Amazon, $10 for like 10 bearings. Like 10 or more. Anyways, um, these are far superior. These are exactly, uh, the, the OD on the inside is perfect. The OD on the outside, perfect. They go in really tight on the shaft and the outer part of the carburetor. You know, the outer part right here, the whole diameter goes in really nice and tight. So that takes away the slack up and down. Okay, now something I discovered, I, I'm not really sure which carburetor it is, but one of these carburetors, actually they, uh, from the factory, Chinese factory, they ended up using some sort of a Loctite. I don't know, it's not red one. It's not red, but they use Loctite on the edges. Let me grab one of these. Okay, they grab, they added Loctite to this perimeter right here so that the shaft wouldn't be slopping in there. That's what they did, okay. One carburetor, only one carburetor, they did that to that. And I was not able to swap out the uh, the bearings. So I'm still running these shitty cur uh, bearings. These, these bearings are garbage because they do not seal perfectly. Dust will get in here. Super fine dust will get in there and they'll become gritty. And then you don't want that because then your throttles will get stuck. Like this one, so this is one that I ran for like ever. And you can tell it's been run. See, it's all gummy. Okay, when I go like this, I can feel sand in there. Like it's just sandy, sandy. Um, this one's the same way. This one, oh God, I can barely turn it. But there's like sand in there. So this one, if I was running in the carburetor, this would have locked up my throttle. It would have, it would have locked up if they had put um, that, uh, what you call it, uh, Loctite right here. Or at least it would be spinning on the outer part on the carburetor itself. It would be spinning, you know, turning. The outer part would be turning on the actual aluminum of the carburetor. And that is no bueno. So I got it spinning. Okay, there it's spinning. It's spinning. But eh, these are garbage. These are garbage. So I recommend. I'll put a a, a a link to where you can get these these bearings. Okay. So we're just going over the stuff that you want to look for. Okay. When you get your new carburetors, like I said, make sure you clean them. Make sure you clean them really good. Make sure these are correct. Make sure your pump jets are the same or identical. At least go, you know, make sure they're identical. That is mostly the knowledge I've got so far um, for these IDFs. IDFs are high maintenance, okay? They're just, they just are, they're, that's the nature of the beast. So these will plug up really easily. So I, I do recommend you get access holes or access holes on your, on your, on your, if you're running on, on a bug, access on the through the wheel you know big hole so you can get to these really easy because the wall is like right there try taking those out when you have one that plugs up i've had that happen twice already so i'm just telling you that's just the nature of the beast um what i did on mine i made uh two uh actually four vacuum ports that i just hooked up right here cb cells these adapters that go right here and you can hook up your adapt your your vacuum ports right there. Um, to me, that's just another another item that can go wrong. So it's like I just you know that's just me. But that would be the easiest way, I guess. Or you can order these from China from China from a, a website in what you call it Europe. I'll put a link down there with the with these if you want to order your vacuum ports. This would be not for the advanced. It would, this would be for the, like the retard or if you're running a computer like a CB black box or 
Mega Squirt, not, well, yeah, Mega Squirt. Eh, I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot bolt, but yeah, Mega Squirt. Or all these other CB performance, they run off here. Or those things that you, if you get them from CB performance, those adapter plates, they have vacuum ports already built into them. You can do that, or you can tap your manifolds and get those like that. If you get one vacuum port, it'll, the, the vacuum signal will bounce like you wouldn't believe. If you get two, it gets a hair better, but not too, not too much. If you use three, uh, it, it, it almost goes, you know, normal, almost, but it's still bouncy. You know, your, your gauge is still doing this, but not as much with just one or two. If you do four, it just, it just, the needle is just solid. Okay, and you just go around, run, run, and that just goes perfect. So, I personally would never uh, run just one vacuum, or two, or three. I would just use all four. For your advance, that would be this one right here. But these only have one advance per carburetor. So, you're going to get a lot of this. Okay, so I would just ditch the... Uh, Distributor that has the advanced vacuum thingy, I would ditch it and just run mechanical at the, with the, uh, what you call it, 009. If you don't want to ditch it, then you would have to buy like a, uh, a va vacuum block or some sort of, you have to make a doohickey, a little, like a little reservoir so that the pulsations are mitigated. It just, you know, because of the can being bigger, it, the, the pulsation kind of, you know gets killed in there I don't have much else to add to these uh, IDFs um, the ones I have in my bug I've, I've pretty much debugged them and I'm really really happy you know I paid a hundred dollars for them I have about a hundred I think they're 125 now they used to be a hundred and I'm very very happy these are the ones that I was planning to run on the 2234 which that would be a bitchin bitchin motor I was thinking of actually changing the cam to an FK8 or FK43. And, uh, you know, because I'm running an FK42 right now. So I figured, add ah, go one more to FK43. Or I'm, I said, you know what, we must go, what if we just go FK8? Screw it. You know, try to get as much horsepower as we can. Because these are capable of making close to 200 horses if you do your cam right and your rockers right. I do recommend them. It's, I had a blast debugging them, okay? I had a blast debugging them um, I do it again in a heartbeat um, however if you you know if you do go Weber well, hats off man you're richer than I am you're a lot richer than I am I couldn't justify that to my wife if I wasn't married maybe I'd buy them but you know I, I do have a life and I just can't go there therefore I have to you know just do what I have to do to make them work that is pretty much it I would like I said, I recommend you change out your bearings. If you don't want to change them out, then I guess you could use Loctite on the center shaft. Just don't get it in, you know, don't get that shit on these metal over here or you're just going to lock it up. Um, that'll seal the leak right there. Um, and if you ever have to take them out, you're, you're just going to have to beat the crap out of it to get these bearings out once you got the Loctite in there. Uh... Yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm just gonna put these back together since they've they're 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 calibrated. I already have my my 55 jets. So this this carburetor is actually already set up for the jetting for the 2234. So you know it's already set up for a big engine. So we're just gonna put these back since they've been calibrated. Yes. Ah. Like so. And put this back on. Oh, my pin is moved on the float, the pin float that holds everything together. There we go. So, okay, these two are ready now. You know, that's pretty much it. This is actually a short video. I just wanted to show you guys the other two IDFs, and they ended up having the same float problem. The same float problem that we had with the ones that are in my in my bug type 4 engine so I I, I, I had no idea because these were calibrated the Weber way which is 14 millimeters 
and the float uh, little tab barely touching the little ball bearing. Boop, you know, that's the way we're calibrated, and they're just all off, all off. Which means I, I'm starting to think it's actually the valve. The valve is crap. All right, that is it, muchachos and muchachas. I los guacho.